Hello, good afternoon. I'm Steve Saul. Welcome to Northwest Today. The headlines this Thursday lunchtime. The dangers of genital mutilation. Police and border forces in Manchester move to protect girls they think are at risk. Head to head for the first time, the three politicians vying to become Labour's candidate for mayor of Greater Manchester. And read and feed the campaign in Rochdale to make sure children don't go hungry over the school summer holidays. Travellers at Manchester Airport are being asked to help police identify girls being taken abroad for female genital mutilation, or FGM. The practice is seen as traditional by some, but officers want everyone to realise it's child abuse. They've been raising awareness amongst passengers as the school holidays are a peak time for girls to be taken to other countries for the procedure. Naomi Caldwell reports. Do you know what FGM stands for? No. No, it's a difficult subject, but it stands for female uh, genital... Uh, uh, uh. Terminal 1 departures. And as families head off on their holidays, they're being asked to think about a sensitive topic. FGM is now such a huge issue within Greater Manchester and there are still so many people out there that are just not aware and I work with a lot of families um, who get brought into the, the system through the police or social workers and who are still really confused. We think there's around 15,000 girls under the age of 15 who are potentially at risk um, and there's around 66,000 women you know, kind of suffering the effects of this um, within the UK. Um, the difficulty obviously is you know kind of some people might not realize you know kind of why they're going so and you know kind of some families might not realize you know kind of the the impact of it since last year police have been able to use prevention orders to try to protect girls who might be at risk of fgm it allows the authorities to seize passports and travel documents from anyone they suspect might be trying to take girls abroad for the procedure fgm is a crime it could result in 14 years imprisonment not only that, it's also child abuse. And a lot of the communities uh, do not realise that is actually a criminal offence. It's been happening for hundreds and hundreds of years. The most important thing for us is the welfare of the children. Officers here hope everyone will be more willing to talk about the subject and raise their concerns with staff if they see anyone who could be at risk. Naomi Cornwell, BBC Northwest Today at Manchester Airport. A man's been arrested after a drone was flown over Liverpool Football Club's away game at Huddersfield Town. The pre-season friendly was paused last night after the gadget was spotted hovering above the Gal Farm Stadium. A 37-year-old man's been bailed pending further inquiries. Police are appealing for information after a snake was found in Bolton. The reptile's been identified as a non-venomous corn snake measuring over a metre long. It was found by residents in the Great Lever area. Now, the three hopefuls bidding to represent Labour in the Greater Manchester mayoral contest will go head-to-head -to -head tonight for the first time. Andy Burnham, Ivan Lewis and the interim mayor, Tony Lloyd, are all taking part in the hustings in their fight to become the party's candidate. It's being hosted at the University of Manchester by Professor Andrew Russell, who joins us now. Good afternoon. Thanks for coming in. So three big Labour names for Greater Manchester. At the minute, can we say who's the frontrunner? Um, well, it's very difficult because you've got very high-profile names, two, former, uh, two current MPs uh, and, uh, and a former MP. Who's, who, who's the interim mayor. So, I mean, I, I, mean, I think in terms of the profile, you know, each of the three candidates for, for the Labour position uh, uh, is incredibly high profile. And, of course, we don't know who, who will, will enter the race subsequently from other parties or from independents. And what are the points of events like this? Is this purely for Labour Party members to see who they like or is this for anybody to assess for themselves what they want? Yeah, I mean, the University are, are hosting this event, but it's, it's a Labour Party event tonight. Uh, Labour are, are choosing their candidate this summer ahead of next May's, uh, uh, next May's uh, Greater Manchester Mayor uh, election. But it's, t it's a chance for tonight for, for members of the public to hear what the candidate have to say and to quiz them on, on matters germane to the position of, of Greater Manchester Mayor across all ten boroughs, you know, items like health, items like policing, uh, uh, it, uh, you know, uh, uh, items you know, you know, such as the, the, the whole position of the, of the Northern Powerhouse and, and, and Devo Mank you know, after Brexit. And ultimately, who chooses who will be the candidate? Well, Labour will choose their own candidate. Uh, so this, this is a part of a series of, which has been going on the whole summer. There have already been hustings in some of the constituency parties. Um, but throughout the whole summer, tonight is a really big event. Uh, and then Labour will choose their own candidate and then we'll go, and then we'll go forward then to a, to, 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 to a, 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 a debate across the across other candidates and other parties. Due to the strength of the Labour vote in Greater Manchester, it could be presumed that a Labour candidate will eventually become the Greater Manchester Mayor. Is 
that likely, do you think, considering what's going on nationally within Labour Party? Well, if, if, you, look, if you look at strength in this region, it, you know, whoever gets the official Labour nomination is, is, is I think, going to be a strong favourite for the, the Greater Manchester Mayor. But remember, it's ten boroughs, and, you know, in some of those boroughs there are considerable strengths for the other parties as well. Uh, and, uh, but but uh, I, would, I would be shocked if whoever wins the Labour nomination isn't the anti-post favourite. OK, Professor Andrew Russell from the University of Manchester, thanks for seeing us this lunchtime. And uh, tonight on North West Tonight at 10.25, we'll be live at those hustings. Our political editor, Arif Ansari, will be there for us. Now, the summer school holidays are here and research shows a stark rise in the number of people using food banks. But a new scheme in Rochdale is trying to tackle so-called holiday hunger and at the same time encouraging youngsters to read. The Read and Feed scheme is the first of its kind in the country. And Suzanne Haley's been to the launch in Smallbridge. Yes, you're joining us here at Smallbridge Library in Rochdale this afternoon, where, like many libraries across the region, it's full of children who are here on their school holidays. But it's not just reading that's taking place here today, and that's because this is the launch of the Read and Feed Scheme, where these children will be given their lunch three days a week, as long as they commit to reading a book a week for the whole of the summer holidays. Now, it's an idea that Councillor John Blundell came up with here. Hello, Councillor. Just tell us, first of all, a little bit more about this idea. Yeah. Well, basically, if the children come in once a day, um, read for a bit or participate in the activity, they get fed. The library is very really well used by children. So a lot of them come in at 10, don't leave till 4. The Trust and Trust last, the last summer holiday said there was a spike in Rochdale um, of people using food banks and basically it's because children weren't being fed during the summer. So the, and this library is perfectly placed to meet that need. OK, thank you very much. Well, we've got a very special guest here this afternoon as well, haven't we? It's a local author. This is, uh, this is Jenny Bailey and she's taking part in a storytelling workshop at the moment. We're going to interrupt Jenny in this workshop. Jenny, if I can just hey, interrupt you very quickly, um, I just want to ask you, um, first of all, what you make of this project, what you make of the scheme. Oh, I think the uh, Read and Feed scheme is absolutely fantastic. It's great getting kids into reading and more widely than that, getting them into the, into the national um, big, re big reading challenge uh, that's going to happen over the summer. Well, it's not quite dinner time just yet. It won't be long before lunch is served, so I'll tell you more at half past six. Join us then. Now more than 70,000 people are expected at the annual RHS Tatton Flower Show that's open to the public today. The Cheshire Gardening Extravaganza is now in its 18th year and it will feature the best in show gardens and masterclasses until Sunday. So hopefully the weather's going to be OK if you're heading down there this weekend. Let's get the forecast. Here's Alex Hamilton. Good afternoon. Well, we've had a mixture of sunshine, but some showers as well over the course of the afternoon. We're looking at this picture from one of our weather watchers. Bright sunshine first thing this morning. But then this was the picture from Martin in Saddleworth earlier on today. Some mamatas clouds starting to come in there. Potentially stormy conditions at times this afternoon. We do have this occluded front coming in our direction, so expect more in the way of sunshine and showers over the course of the next few days. As we go through the rest of this afternoon, we'll continue to see those showers starting to bubble up across the region. Highs of around 22 degrees Celsius, more cloud building into the picture as well. Then as we go through the course of this evening, we could see some heavier showers working across the region for a time. The chance of a rumble of thunder and another quite oppressive night. Lows of only around 15 degrees Celsius. Then as we go towards tomorrow morning, it's a very similar picture. We will have some bright spells tomorrow, some sunshine in there as well. But those showers starting to build in over the course of the day. Highs again of around 22 degrees Celsius. So where you do see some of that sunshine, it will be feeling pleasant. But we're sticking with those showers as well over the course of the next few days. Well, not too bad then. Uh, Annabelle and Stuart are back tonight at 6.30 here on BBC One. We're also back in Tatton where a special BFG garden's being unveiled. We'll get the latest on that. So we'll see you then. Until then, goodbye.